Hey everyone, Ronaldo Offerman here with RKS Video Manuals. Now before we start talking about the program, I want to go over uh, some of the systems that you can use to be able to use this. Now one of the great things about RKS is that you don't have to have a huge, super beefy $10,000 computer to run it. Now, this is a program that grows with you. You know, you can just use it to run one head, meaning one output to do, you know, just basic video mixing or effects. You may want to run dual monitors, and not just, you know, where they're cloned, but where they're separate. Or in my case, you may want to run four heads at a time and be able to combine them into one. Obviously, the more you do, including using flash graphics as visualizers and such, the beefier computer you're going to need. But I'm starting with a very simple system here. Some of the components are newer, some of them are older. Just to show you that you can run Arceus with a medium entry computer. And I've actually used this for my entire homecoming season with no problem. So let's go ahead and look at it. First of all, the motherboard, which is definitely where you want to find something that's going to you know, really hold what you want to have in the long run. Uh, luckily, I was able to find this one for $99 online, and the model number escapes me right now, but it's a Gigabyte model, and it's a Socket 1155, which the po at the point when I bought it was the most up-to-date socket as far as running i3s or i7s. There is a new one that's out, but obviously, you know, the system isn't outdated yet because there's still plenty of great i3, i5, and i7 processors that will run on this one. So right now, I'm actually not even running an i3. I'm just running one of the Core 2 Duos on there, one of the very last ones of the Core 2 Duos because it did a great job. I have an uh, i5 that I need to slap in there. I just haven't had the time yet. Uh, but this particular board actually has two PCI 16s, and here I'm running just a couple of NVIDIA cards. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, one NVIDIA card, and then I'm running an ATI card because my NVIDIA died on me. Uh, they're probably about two or three years old, not the greatest cards out there, you know, a couple gigs of RAM. Uh, you know, you wouldn't want to play any games on it, but for rendering video, these things do a great job. You know, I'm running video at full 1080p out of four individual heads with no problem. But what's great about this particular motherboard, and you always want to look at when, uh, motherboards and ask them, will the BIOS allow you to run your two video cards or multiple heads and the onboard because the onboard VGA or DVI or HDMI or a combo thereof are easy to run the monitor. So I have one monitor that goes to the onboard and then these go to the actual monitors, you know, or the projectors or whichever. Uh, there's also the little shorter PCI, you know, Express and I currently only use one right now. That one is to run my Black Magic card. Now this particular card uh, has multiple inputs. You have your HDMI inputs, you have your composite, and you can select you know, pretty much many options in there. Now you can only do one input at a time with this card, so I'm gonna get a second card to do that. Here I have just an older one that just does analog you know, video, well, analog video in in terms of only composite video in or S video. It doesn't do any digital video in. And I usually use that to, you know, if I'm doing live video camera or if I'm just doing low resolution video, just to do a second cam in or whichever. And then one of these uh, was also for my computer. Or another option that I've done now is I actually have my HDMI in from my camera or I do composite in from the Elation camera, whichever option I have. And then I actually stream music videos using AirPlay uh, through a network. And I don't want to talk about that too much yet because it's still not perfect. So once I have it perfected and as fast as I want it to, you know, I'll kind of do a video on that as well. Uh, not a lot of RAM on this one. Actually, I'm only running about 16 gigs. And that's it. Obviously, a lot of cooling here. You know, I have the Antec power supply, 650 watts, which is perfect for both of these cards. Uh, I could probably jump up to a little beefier one, but I'm not running 3D graphics, so I haven't actually taxed the uh, power supply yet. But these fans actually are high power fans, no matter how cheap they look. Uh, and then, of course, you know, just the standard Intel stock cooling fan. But again, very simple. And then I have uh, one terabyte drive here. I have a mirror drive there, and this one's actually not connected. But once I have it in there, it's just, you know, I have it in ready to go just for additional space. So, I mean, it's very simple. That's it. That's the hardware that goes behind it. I'm going to show you the console and the thought process behind it. Kind of get you excited about what RKS can and will do. And, again, my system may not be for everybody. It may be overkill. It may not be enough for you, but it will give you a good starting point. Now, this is a cluster mess, but I kind of had to move it around so you could see it. So, this is the tail for the Blackmagic design card. And, again, you have multiple ins or outs. You've got your HDMI in and HDMI out underneath there. Uh, but I have the tail on because I will do right here. 
I'll hook up my Elation video camera to it for the highest resolution in there. And again, this is just an older card that just does um, composite in. And it's also used as a backup too. Let me kind of focus in on that so you can see it. And what I do is the way that I connect my computer to this or if I have a second computer or something like that and I just need to do quick visuals or something like that, you know, nothing that I need high res, it's got S-Video in and I use this little converter, cheap little converter that I got that converts VGA to S-Video. So again, that's kind of like a little backup in there if I need it or I use the black magic card. I'm going to get a second black magic card so I can do everything in full high res. And it does have uh, up converting or upscaling built in so I can actually take a uh, composite signal in and it'll convert it to a much better quality signal. And then of course you've got four individual heads. Uh, one of them's currently disconnected but because that's DVI there. There's the VGA adapter, two more VGA adapters. Uh, pretty common sense there. Now for now I have the monitor hooked to one of these heads versus this one just because unless you need all four of them it's better using one of the onboard graphics cards. Uh, this motherboard also has USB 3.0 which is nice and if these heads were to fail I can run VGA and DVI as an output or HDMI as an output so I mean without having to buy a second video card you could use this particular board and there's tons of boards out there like this so uh, again I'll, I'll see if I can find a video or the model number but you can do multiple you know you can have multiple heads out of one motherboard without any external video cards you're not going to be able to run them at full quality because these obviously have, uh, you know, their own processor, GPU, and their own RAM, etc. But that's the back of it. Now, when you open this up, I've got the mouse. I've got a, just a little secondary webcam. Uh, this is a great wireless uh, video system that I bought from Ben Stowe at NLFX. And what's great about it is, again, this is for the Elation camera that I use for the live video. Uh, I don't have any buffering issues with this. Even though it's a 2.4 gigahertz and I have tons of other stuff running on the same bandwidth or band, I've had no issues with this. There is a little bit of a, like, maybe half a second delay for the buffer, but that's fine. It's never been a big of a deal. If I need instantaneous, you know, camera, uh, meaning, you know, live streaming, then you hardwire it. So we pop up the monitor. Uh, this is uh, the Koic NanoPad 2, which I have mapped just to recall some basic uh, cues on Arceus, which we'll go over later on, and, of course, the keyboard. And the way I, I like to tilt it backward a little bit so when the guys are sitting, they can just type in a little bit more comfortable. Can you tell it's been a while since we've had our homecoming season? Uh, and then what I did is I actually took a laptop shelf or a keyboard shelf and actually mounted it backwards. So that way it could kind of lean back a little bit. Just a personal preference. Again, okay, it just folds back down. This goes in. And we're good to go. So again, that is my system. Uh, next we'll talk about... Uh, the elements of Arceus and what to look for as far as when you're in there, how do you start and all that. But again, share with a friend and be ready for the next step in video console and that's basically future proof. You know, as Arceus upgrades and comes out with new features, I'll be able to just swap individual components. You know, I don't have to throw out a super expensive multi-thousand dollar video board just because I want a new feature. And I'm using Arceus XD which has the projector mapping so I'll be doing some videos on that as well. Again, my name is Arnaldo Wofferman. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the video. Share with your friends. Thanks so much and God bless.